Alright, Elden Ring has a lot of hidden details, some of which were right in front of my eyes. For example, the notes sold by merchants reveal a lot of really cool mechanics. By doing a plunge attack onto one of the giant face flamethrower enemies, you'll stab into its chimney, doing around 12,000 damage. Then, the machine will start to shake and fume until it eventually explodes. Another note tells you you can poison the poison eggs and they'll overload and explode, which then poisons the others and then they explode. It's way too enjoyable. They're also called land squirts, which is kind of funny. They also say how to basically one-shot undead enemies. If you heal around them, it does massive damage, and the incantation I'm using is just the default one. Also, holy damage does kill skeletons the first time. There's also the gravity spells, which throw the flying enemies to the ground, making them very easy to kill. Not to mention, if you kill the leader of a demi-human mob, the rest will just cower in fear and not fight back, even if you do hit them. Just recently, it was discovered that there's actually a fake wall that takes multiple hits to break. Brought to light by Reddit user Terrastam, and popularized by Iron Pineapple, within Volcano Manor, if you hit a wall for a very long time, it will eventually break. And as pointed out by Zuli the Witch, it actually has 9,999 HP. And if you want to know why, check out all their tweets, it's very interesting. Another small detail is at the Frenzy Flaming Tower, where you can slightly reduce buildup of madness by simply wearing a helmet. Also, did you know you can pause Elden Ring? It's more of a glitch instead of a mechanic, but if you go into your equipment, press help, and then menu explanation, the game will not move. But the amount of tiny details with enemies is really cool. You might not know this, but while attacking the land octopus, they will eat their own limbs to regain health, which is kind of gross. There's also the giant flowers that freak out when you set them on fire, and it actually burns away the poison. Another move to just look cool is the Storm Wall Ash of War, which when used creates a whirlwind effect that can actually deflect arrows. It has potential to it, and from what I know it can deflect some boss projectiles. But if you like the video, subscribe, it does help out a lot. Now we're all aware of the giant lobsters, and they're already a surprise enough, but what you might not know is one of them is not what they seem. And the lobster located near the bottom left part of the lake is actually a scion. And once that enemy is killed, it will drop a larval tear, which is used for rebirth, explaining the hidden enemy. But that isn't the only one, and there's actually many more. Some of which is the normal looking soldier, who's actually a bear, and another soldier who's actually a troll. It's really funny to come across, and the item drops are pretty good. While at the Church of Erith, you'll encounter Thops, who asks for a spare glintstone key. And if obtained and given, he'll give you the Eurodition gesture and continue on his way. But there's a small detail that comes with the gesture. If you happen to wear any of the glintstone crowns and use the newly acquired emote, the stones on them will glow. But Elden Ring has a total of 6 torches, and with that many options, they're bound to do more than just light a room, and some of them actually have pretty cool effects. The St. Trina's torch, found on the mountaintops of the giants, within a wagon, displays a cool purple color, but this torch's ability will actually put enemies to sleep. Another one, within Nokron, called the Ghost Flame Torch, has a nice blue glow, and this time, each hit builds up frost. But one of my favorites, which reminds me of Bloodborne, is called the Beast Repellent Torch, and it does exactly what you think. When equipped, rats and wolves will refuse to attack you. Bears will also just run away, and you can chase them around. I did try it on the mini boss bear, but it didn't have any effect. Oh, by the way, as pointed out by Zuli, there's actually 7 torches instead of 6, the 7th being its own weapon and classifying as a spear. But while exploring, you might come across some of these statues, and I'd always recommend following the path they show, as it leads to shortcuts or secret caves. There's not much to them, but they are helpful. Another useful detail involves the trails left after you've killed an enemy. Depending on the color, you can tell if there's an item to pick up. In previous Souls games, you'd have to wait for the enemy to die and then kind of ragdoll around until the item finally appeared. Although now, if the color's white, then that means there's an item. And if yellow, then it's just ruins. Now, I don't know why I didn't look into it now, but Fia the Hugging Lady is actually pretty bad. If you decide to be held, you'll acquire Baldekin's Blessing, which takes away 5% of your max HP for a boost in poise, which just helps you not get staggered. Although, just go to your inventory and use the item, which gives you a 35% physical damage negation for around 15 seconds. But that doesn't mean ignore Fia, as if you've been to Altus Plateau, talking to her will initiate a very easy questline that I'm not sure if I wish I did. Tell me what you think. 
Now, there are a lot of these mines, and with them being the main place for smithing stones, it can be a must-need destination. But there's no reason for the enemies to be difficult. Since they're just made of stone, just use a blunt weapon, which as you can see does around 4 times more damage. Although there is another option, and magic is just as, or even more effective than the blunt weapons. I mean, it melts these guys. It also works just as well on the boss. With Elden Ring's new boss style being longer combos, parrying is much more effective, and there are many bosses that are just designed to overwhelm you. They'll have 6 or 7 chain attacks that you have to run from, and instead of trying to dodge each move, just spam the parry button and it will hit. Trust me, this has made so many boss fights easier, because, well, they do all the work for you. Also, if you have an effective parry, try and time your charged heavy attack and strike them just as they're getting up. It's really effective, and actually if you don't think the timing has matched up, just let go of the trigger and you can do a fast heavy attack, which does less damage, but at least you can guarantee the hit. Also, for previous Dark Souls players, the drop attack is gone. It's now replaced with the weapon's normal light attack, which makes sense as abusing it with jumping would have been too hard to balance. Although since they removed one set of attack animations, they added a new category, and that's crouching attacks, which are pretty effective, especially when sneaking up and trying to combo it with normal moves. But Elden Ring is much more convenient than its predecessors. While putting on armor, unlike their previous games, it tells you what weight class you're in. I don't know why it took them this long, as it's so convenient. But while trying on armor, why not be able to look at it? And by pressing the analog stick, or Y on your keyboard, you can view your armor without having to exit the menu. But I haven't even touched the biggest addition to the new game, which is Torrent. But it took me way long to realize that you can actually heal him. During horse fights, sometimes your horse will take the blunt of the damage, and while well, even if you're at full health, take a sip of your flasks and you will heal a decent amount. But as you guys probably know, your horse doesn't take damage in poison areas, and if you need a quick change of direction, a double jump can do that. But what you might not know is that if you're in a tight area and need to rotate without falling, the telescope will allow you to do that. By using it, you can rotate and face any direction with relative ease. By the way, while riding around, if you ever hear a twinkling noise, then that means there's a dung beetle somewhere near. And I recommend killing them as you do get valuable materials, such as Ashes of War. Throughout your run, you'll acquire cracked pots, which are a crafting material used to make throwable pot items. But each cracked pot you acquire actually functions like a flask. When these materials are crafted, it only uses the plants needed for the recipe, and the pot itself is never consumed, only temporarily used. And as you can see, on the menu it says 3 out of 7, so I have 7 in total, and if I use one of my pots, then it's now 2 out of 7. Also, the game does tell you this, as in the item description, it does mention how this empty pot somehow mends itself when broken. I do like this mechanic, as it's much more of an incentive to use consumable materials. With that being said, I don't think I'll ever bring myself to use one, even if it's on the final boss. Did you know there are different types of mausoleums? They're divided between bosses that have pieces of the Elden Ring and ones that don't. But throughout your playthrough, you might notice these walking houses getting more aggressive. The first couple will just walk around, not aggro. Eventually, two of them will have a pretty high jump that's really surprising at the time. And one of the last ones shoots magic projectiles. It's pretty cool to see their evolution. Towards the back of the round table hold, you'll come across this two-headed statue called the Twin Maiden Husks. And with this game being so big, the statue is effectively your NPC shop hub. If during a questline or on accident an NPC dies, they'll drop a bell with their name on it. If given to the Twin Maiden, then you have unlocked their shop. And after a lot of dead NPCs, you can build up a pretty big inventory. Some people have gone out of their way to kill every NPC and create the ultimate shop, so you don't have to backtrack throughout the map. It's a pretty chaotic idea. But hopefully you learned something new, and if you like the video, subscribe. And if you know any other hidden mechanics or details, I'd love to know, because I might make a second video on this. But as always, I appreciate you watching up until this point. Have a good one.